Yeah. Hey, hi. Good morning. Um, and it is it is probably a good morning. It is uh it's Thursday. This is the fourth day of the the daily brew. I did the intro one where we talked about the idea. I did the the workflow one where we talked about how I make these videos in general, and that was kind of fun. And and it's it has resulted in some people being like, hey, maybe you should do things this way. And so far, none of them have been perfectly useful because they're all things that are like, yeah, I, I know I should be doing things that way, but I can't because of other requirement of the thing or whatever, right? And uh, then we did the one on being is good and contempt for being, which is maybe maybe close to my my best work. Um. Having gone through it now a couple of times, I think that might be that might be the best thing I've ever made. And shit, that's cool, right? Like we had this pre presupposition or this 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 guess that doing this morning podcast thing every day might lead to some interesting content. And wow, wow, what do you know? Seems like it's happening. I think that's also really useful in terms of other content because it means that I'm not going to be spending two hours during a different video talking about things that are just on my mind floating around. I can get those out during the Daily Brew and sort of focus on the media during the thing, and that seems to work. Holy shit, my, my bicep looks big. That's... that's weird. <laughs> that's weird. I have skinny small arms, and I have always had skinny small arms, and it's like, oh shit, I'm getting, getting a little bit stronger. <laughs> Good! <laughs> Um, and that's, that's an overall thing. It's, it's partly because I've lost body fat. I'm actually down like 25 pounds from my, my max, uh, uh, weight. I'm, I'm down quite a bit. And that's just because I've changed my eating habits. I'm eating a lot more protein and a lot less in general. And I feel, feel really good. And, and things are going well for me in, in a general sense. And that's great. And that's our starting point for today because while things are going well, well, they don't just continue going well without effort. You have to continuously try to expand your boundaries. And something that I'm going to do today, right now, is I'm going to expand my boundaries. So, <laughs> oh man, this is terrifying. I'm going to tell you about what this is after I send the message. But I'm going to send the message first. And then, and then the fear is going to pop in, right? So I've already written this out. And it's super shit. I know that it's super cringeworthy and I don't really care it's kind of like putting up the rap it's just it's true and it's as true as i can it's true as i can say and be and so i'm gonna take it and i'm gonna copy it and then i'm gonna paste it into an instagram chat fuck 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 shit 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 what the fuck okay so there's something up with the text some of the text is black and some of the text is white after i copy it what the fuck so paste without formatting paste without formatting come on paste as plain text great Boom. Okay, please, please work properly. I just don't want to deal with this again. I don't want to have to read my cringy, my cringy letter again. Paste. Nice. Sent it. Fuck. Ah. Oh, instant fucking regret. God. Oh my god. Okay, so here's here's why. I just asked a girl out. That's what I did. That's what I did, and I did it over Instagram because I don't know when I'm gonna see her again. Then that's the reason that I did it that way and it's stupid but here's here's the story behind it and i'll tell you the story behind it and then it'll start to make sense i've talked about this girl before never mentioned her by name never going to like why would i do that um but i've talked about this girl before she's a girl that i've met at the gym she's quite a bit younger than i am she's of age just to make things clear right like she's an adult um gorgeous like go gorgeous has done modeling is continuing to do modeling should be a model looks like a model when you see her is like fuck that is an insanely pretty woman, right? Like, wow. Met her almost a year ago now that we actually, like, met and started talking. And it was because I lift out there and she was lifting, lifting out there. I saw her deadlifting. And uh, I think the, you know, we, we had we had conversed a couple times because she and her friends would, would, like, put out a speaker and they'd, they'd dance. And we would, like, dance along to it because when good music came along, because we're dumb idiots at the gym, right? And there are some cute girls over there dancing to music. It's like, yeah, woo! Or, you know, cheer them on when they're making big lifts. Like, yeah, it'd be just part of a supportive environment at the gym. is It's so important and so helpful in, in, so, many, in so many ways. Oh, shit, I set the temp too high, so I'm actually going to have to wait for that to cool down a little bit. Um, being supportive in the gym in, in so many ways. But the, the interaction that really, like, that clicked for me was I saw her trying to deadlift, and she, she missed a deadlift. Like, she pulled on it really hard and I could see it was just it was just killing her that she couldn't get this deadlift so I, I went up to her and I brought my belt over because I'm pretty small and so my weightlifting belt is pretty small and I thought maybe this will fit her she's tiny right a tiny girl um 
and that's saying something because I'm quite small as a human being. I'm five foot five. She's a little bit shorter than me and, and a little bit and petite. She's female, right? Like, well, dude, what are you going to do about it? Um, but I offered her my belt and she took it and she got the lift. She pulled through and was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Where did you get this belt? I need one. And, you know, we became friends over this and, and that's good. I've mentioned her a few times because she is the first person, woman, but also the first person that I've been significantly attracted to in about six or seven years. I haven't, I haven't met anybody that I've been like significantly and truly attracted to in like six or seven years. The last person that I was genuinely attracted to was a, uh, a Swedish girl who was working as a, uh, the artist in one of the startups that I was working at. And she had a boyfriend, a long-term boyfriend. So there was no, no hope there. And then before that, it was a, a girl in college. And I just, and then before that, it was a single girl in high school. Like, I just haven't met anybody who meets my standards. And that's a problem with my standards, to be fair. But it's also a problem with people. Like, a lot of people suck. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of people suck. And a lot of, a lot of people who might be, you know, uh, men go for physical attractiveness first. Like, we, we use that as our first paradigm. And it, it, there's, that's a big filter. And I've got a pretty high filter when it comes to physical attractiveness maybe too high you know maybe that's maybe that's irrational and maybe not, i'm not attractive enough mentally or physically or emotionally or financially or whatever to achieve uh being worthy of girls who are attractive enough for me to want them maybe that's a problem with me but i've i've stuck with my guns and not settled and that's meant being essentially celibate um for this period i haven't i haven't had a uh, sexual relation with a, a a a woman in a long time in a long time and that hurts it, it really genuinely hurts and i think it's bad for the human i think humans need partners and and to be clear i don't just mean heterosexual partners and i don't just mean romantic partners like people need people people need socialization people need friends but people also need something serious and some kind of like some kind of romance some kind of like future some kind of like something beyond brotherly love something about like we're love right like we need that shit i think at least I do. At least I crave it. You know, maybe I don't need it. And maybe the fact that I've lived these six or seven years without it to any extent is evidence that I don't need it. But it does feel like something's missing and I do crave it. And when I see this girl, I am aware of that, of that lack. Her, her existence reflects upon me and makes me ache in a weird way. It, it makes me feel incomplete and that's an interesting and cool thing and weird and not something that i'm super familiar with i'm not i'm not a, a dating coach i'm not a romance guy i don't know how that shit works um I'm a, I'm a newbie on that front really really and truly um and that that makes some sense you know i've said before i come from a broken household with a a broken familial relationship so i don't exactly have the best examples for how to pursue a quality romantic relationship and i also have some some like attachment and commitment issues because the primary romantic relationship that was in my life didn't work, right? Like my, my primary example didn't work. And so pursuing that seems fraught and faulty, but that's in contrast with the need that I have. And it's a need like hunger and not like lust, not like lust, something much more complicated and much more <sighs> pure in a way than that. You know, because cause I, can, I can satisfy myself and my own lusts pretty effectively. That's not a problem. But the need for connection is something else. It's something else. Anyway, this girl is like a beacon when I see her. She shines. I said during the Kill a Kill acid trip, actually, I was talking about her. When, I, when I, I, I opened my phone and I saw an Instagram post that she was posting, I just went, oh my god, there she is dancing over there with the divine feminine like she's off doing her thing like i'm not gonna find the girl that i want on tinder she's not looking for me she's not looking for somebody she's off doing something right like she's off doing it and so it's only by happenstance that i've met a girl who seems to be maybe possibly anywhere near like that and that's interesting and, and cool but she showed up at the gym yesterday I was there with my friend we were squatting doing doing some of our work she showed up at the gym and all smiles just a lovely interaction, chatting back and forth. She attributes some of her, you know, the past year's like growth and I immense increase in strength and flexibility and and mobility and form quality to the little tips that 
that I've, you know, said to her or, or been like, hey, you know, if you, if you don't squat with your feet straight forward and you point them out to the sides, you you open your hips and you can actually get depth and that would be really cool. And she'd be like, I don't know about that. And then she'd try it and she'd be like, I do know, I do know about that. That is correct. And she fixed some of her shit, right? And it's awesome. It's awesome. But she attributes some of that to, to, to us and that's gorgeous. And there's this very clear, like, mutual respect and admiration there. And I have thought... And I, I don't actually know. I might have been right. But on, on her Instagram, she posts frequently uh, videos and images of herself with a particular guy. And so I, I made the, the, the clear and easy assumption that's her boyfriend and they've been together for a while. And they're both dancers and they're, they're choreographers and they work together. And it's like, well, they've got a long-term thing going on, so I'm not going to intrude on that very well, right? And so I just sort of supplemented my own, my own desires or my own interest to be like, well, good. She's doing her own thing. She's young. Maybe she'll end up being single at some point and then I'll ask her out. So saw her at the gym, had a nice conversation, talked a bit. She worked out. We worked out. We stayed longer. She was like, all right, peace. I'm going to go kill myself on the Stairmaster. It's like, good, good, sweet. Go, go get it. And off she trots. And a couple of minutes later, a guy must be 19, 20, young guy. He's got the, the sort of, he's got a, a bunch of, of piercings of crosses uh, and upside down crosses. Got a big, big crucifix around his neck. Uh, and, and cool, honestly, a, a cool looking dude with a, walks up to me with a big smile on his face. He's also, um, he's got a, a body type that I see a lot in the young men that I see at the gym. And it's a pretty common one. It's, it's big chest, big shoulders, big arms, little legs. Uh, and it's just imbalanced. It's like, it's mirror muscles. It's, it's narcissism. It's naivete and not understanding how the body works completely. And, and that's fine. Fair enough. Better than being fat and slovenly. So good. Good for him. Um, confident guy comes up to me. Uh, uh, not a tall guy, but, but, you know, I'm an unintimidating guy. And uh, he comes up to me and he goes, hey, are you friends with that girl? And I go, yeah, I'm, I, I suppose I am. I'm, I suppose I'm friends with her. And he goes, uh, can I get her Insta? She's really pretty. And something in my brain went, oh, geez, oh, fuck. So I, I, I gave him a look and I said, well, I, I can give it to you, but I'll warn you. I think she has a boyfriend and I think they've been together for a while. And he went, oh, OK, no problem, man. Super cool. Uh, uh, that's totally fine. Peace. Thanks for the, you know, he heads off. And that was the end of the interaction. And my mind was just sort of mulling that over. And I went back and I continued my workout. And a few minutes later, I thought, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let her know. I'll let her know. So I typed out a quick message to her that was just like, hey, just thought I'd let you know. A few minutes after you left, a guy came over and asked for your Instagram, said he thought you were really pretty, thought that you might want to know that. And she, she responded to me saying something. Well, I can pull it up. But she, she responded saying like, oh, wow, you know, you, you know, you, you something like you, you didn't make any mistakes by doing that. That's. That's totally, totally cool. Uh, uh, I'd prefer to meet somebody in person anyway. And, you know, I, I am sort of dealing with my single demons at the gym, but no worries. If he wants to come and talk to me, he'll do so on his own. It's like, and my thought was, oh shit, she's single. <laughs> oh God, she's single. And that brings us to today. And to what I wrote. Because what I wrote is the truth as far as I can see it. And it's stupid. But I, this is what I wrote. And I'm just going to read most of it to me. Hi. It's taken me a night's sleep to really let yesterday sink in. And I've come to a conclusion. I say her name here. If you're single and I don't ask you out, I'm going to regret it forever. You're the first person I've met in about six years that I'm seriously attracted to. And I'd really like to understand you better. I have zero clue how to do this, but date me, please, all caps <laughs> or something. And uh, and this is where it gets real cringy. And I, I, I wish I'd cut this part out, but fuck, I've already sent it. So deal, right? Or something. And uh, not to undercut the oomph of that request, but no pressure, okay? I know you've got a lot going on, so don't feel bad if it's a no for any reason. I can deal. Shit. Not exactly the uh, the pickup artist's way of doing this, but, you know, I'm a fumbling idiot, and I think that in a lot of cases, the only way to move forward in something like this is to be a fumbling idiot and to communicate your, your desires, and in this case, my desire is date me! Holy shit! Holy shit, you're awesome! <laughs> is, is basically where I'm at. And we'll see. And we'll see. But I needed to send that letter, and I, I wanted to do it on camera in a weird way i really i really did and i there's a distinct possibility that this will just totally ruin our friendship right like no chance that we can ever be friends again totally a distinct possibility and that's pain right that's pain but again if i don't do this 
if she's single, if she's single and I don't ask her out or if I don't make an attempt, I am going to regret it for the rest of my life because, you know, I've gone the last six, seven years without being near somebody that I really, really enjoy the company of and there's one and you run away from it because you're afraid. So that's some that's some bullshit, right? And and you know, I'd regret it for my whole life and there would be nobody to blame but myself, right? And if she comes back and she says no, fine. Great. Good. Good. Like excellent. I will have gone from a place of uncertainty to a place of certainty. And that might be gorgeous, right? Like good. So if it's a no, you know, if she's just not interested in me or if she's got too much going on, it's like no for now, but maybe later, fine, whatever. Well, then I, I go from all this questioning to being able to move on and get over it and go go meet somebody else and, and keep an eye out, right? And, and, you know, maybe we could become good friends if the no is there and it's explicitly stated. And maybe we couldn't become good friends if that no has never been stated. That would be really cool. And if it's a yes, well, how cool might that be? I mean, also terrifying, right? This would be, you know, uh, this would be the first real date that I've gone on in years. And it will be with a person that, that I am really genuinely, there's no practice run here, right? Like there's no, there's no, well, if this doesn't work out, it's fine. I mean, it's still a practice run because every person is a practice run and every, every situation is a, an opportunity for learning and growth. And every situation might fail and might be just an opportunity to, to learn things for the next situation, right? And that might be great, right? You know, I, I don't know if I want to meet somebody and date them seriously for a long-term relationship. I don't know if I want to settle. I feel like I'm too young to. So I don't know. But I'm willing to step into that unknown in order to find out. Because it's better than doing nothing. You know, if I'm sitting here in my castle and I just don't know what's outside the castle, then all that's outside the castle is fear. The unknown. And that fear might contain dragons, and the dragons might come and eat me. Because the dragon of loneliness comes and it eats people. It breathes fire over everything that they own destroys everything that they love and eats them uh, relatively frequently and more so in our in our current day and age i think and i don't want to get eaten by the dragon of loneliness and so what do you do you go out and you fight it how do you fight it well you go and try to make connections with people i guess something like that and maybe it works and maybe it doesn't maybe you get killed by the dragon anyway but at least you tried so that's where i'm at i've i sent a message and i don't fucking know what's going to happen you know i i expect to get Honestly, I expect to get ghosted because in my experience, when I have, and this is, this is a learned behavior, when I have said the truth as I see it or expressed my interest directly and forthrightly most of the time, and this has to do, you know, the, the pickup artist psychologists will say that this has to do with uh, uh, neediness or that this has to do with... Um, um, women feeling like uh, it's like a demonstration of of uh, a demonstration of not power, a demonstration of worthiness or something like that. If you play hard, you have to play hard to get is the thing that they say. And I, I say that's bullshit. Like I get that there's this intricate dance that humans do as part of courtship, and it's it's some stupid shit that doesn't make sense to me because I'm a little bit on the spectrum. Uh, 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 in the, uh, on the, the, the ASD spectrum, the autism spectrum disorder area, just a little bit, just a little bit in terms of interpreting things. And so I've found that, that straightforward, direct and serious, like, like truly bare bones, deadpan communication is the best way, is the best way for me. And so, you know, it's like, well, if, if the girl ghosts me, then that wasn't the girl because cause the communication style that I need didn't work. And so, good. <laughs> good. What? You're going to find out that, that the person that you're interested in isn't interested in the way that you're interested in them? Good. Now you can move on. Amazing. Like, amazing. Wonderful. I'm just going to take my phone and I'm going to throw it over there. <laughs> fuck, fuck that. I threw it onto my bed. It's safe. But uh, uh, I, keep, I keep opening it to check if there's a response to the message. And that's, that's, some, that's some sick shit, right? I've, I've, done, I've been there before and it's some sick shit. But that's the thing that I've learned is that you, you speak your, your interest or your desire and you get ghosted. That's a pretty bad lesson. 
And so it's painful to continue doing it anyway, to try anyway. But maybe it'll be worth it. Maybe it will. And I, I hope that, you know, I hope that I get a response today and that I can pop on the camera and I can, I can tell you guys what that response was. I'll leave this video unedited until the end of the day to see if I get one and maybe share it with you. And maybe that would be interesting. I, I don't know. But I will say this. Despite all the, the regret and the, the, the pain <laughs> that I'm currently in, which is like, oh no, I did something that I haven't even been judged for, right? You do this directly to a girl and you get Ugh, immediately and then you've immediately been judged and it's over and it's fine, right? It's like done, done, man, easy. But you do it via a message, which is a problem. Like I recognize that's not the best way to do this, but I don't know when I'm going to see her again. It was pure happenstance that she happened to be at the gym yesterday and it's like, I don't know if I'm going to see her tomorrow when I go to the gym. Probably not. She's busy as hell. So got to do it via some medium. And we've met and we know each other and we've seen each other face to face and we've looked into each other's eyes and smiled. And like we've got some level of connection and she knows that I'm not going to murder her the first time that we see each other. And that's good, probably. And I, I have a feeling that she's not going to try to, to kill me either. And that's good. So we can move from there maybe and maybe... Maybe doing this cow in the cowardly way of doing it by Instagram to some extent might get forgiven. Maybe. I don't know. But fuck. <laughs> Ugh. I'm, just, I'm so much more okay now than I was a few minutes ago before I had sent the message. Because then it was all in uncertainty and I hadn't taken the step forward into the unknown, right? I had just, just stood where I was and thought about it a lot and written out a message in a memo app and not sent it yet. I hadn't said the thing. And saying the thing is what aligns everything. Saying the thing, saying, that's the kind of girl that I want to date. I'm going to pursue her. I have pursued her. Now the ball's in her court. And I get to sit back and go, well, let the universe decide. And let her, as a hyper-complicated entity within this universe with her own full belief systems and systems of representation of the world and ways of seeing things and ways of seeing herself and idealized version of what she's looking for in some kind of a partner, let her process that. Like, it sucks. It's got to suck for her, right? Like, a, a, a beautiful girl got, gets hit on constantly, to some extent. And also not to some extent. And that's something that I've learned by befriending without hitting on some beautiful girls which i've been doing at the gym and some of them i'm just not interested in which is really helpful it's really helpful to have some female friends who are beautiful and attractive who i'm not actually attracted to because then i get to know them as people and i don't just know them through the lens of my attraction to them which is a really hard thing that i think men grapple with is because we we don't we don't treat beautiful women in our minds like other people or, or beautiful people, right? Like, I, I mean, I assume that this is probably true for gay men too and for gay women too and for people all across the spectrum. When you see somebody that you're attracted to deeply and you think they're gorgeous, like, that alters all of your behaviorology around them and, and all of your behavioral stuff around them. I, I do see this with, with like, young gir girls when they see a, a very masculine man. Uh, I actually saw it the, the other day at the gym. I was talking to a friend um, who's who's becoming a good friend of mine at the gym. Uh, uh, he goes there and he does boxing training at the the boxing bags. And he's got a a real messed up hip that that got real fucked up in a car accident. But he was there with his two sisters and this really this really beefy like high school but like high school football captain type looking guy. You know, about six feet tall, built as hell, wearing a tight shirt, walks in the gym, and both the girls went. <gasps> whoa like under their breasts just like <gasps> you know they treat those people differently they're like oh my god I, I, an adonis has walked into the world and men do the exact same thing they're like oh my god a, a goddess has it walks among us all worship and you see it at the gym these girls will walk around and and guys will be tripping over themselves to be like hi do you need clips for your weights hi can i help you lift this hi can i do anything for you please let me lick your feet <laughs> like is is where the the guys are they're all oh. and so you know the beautiful women don't don't uh they, they get approached all the time all the time and then also never approach because nobody ever grapples with them as humans as like people Right? And so getting to know some beautiful people as people is really helpful because you recognize the most important axiom that I've come to, which is people are people are people 
are people. And often the beautiful ones are pretty fucked up inside because they don't experience pain in the same ways that a lot of not so beautiful people end up experiencing it or like social rejection. You know, uh, um, um, part of the way that we stay sane in a large part is by the reflected behaviors of the people around us. You know, we do something and everybody goes, dude, are you sure about that? And we go, well, maybe I'm not sure about that. Maybe I should change my behaviors for the future. And we change. We alter ourselves to appease the society around us and ensure that we can continue moving on. And beautiful people don't get that because the people who are attracted to them are loath to criticize because they think that they'll get rejected if they criticize. It's part of why the stupid and and ignorant and and wrongly executed in a lot of ways and and badly taught idea of like negging is supposed to to work in pickup artistry. It's like you treat the person like they're a person and like you're capable of seeing their flaws and you're going to treat them as though they have flaws and they're actually a full person and not just a a goddess among among mortals and they go oh god please yes tell me more about myself and how bad i am please 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 and they'll you know they'll fight back with you but they that's attractive it's it's attractive to not be intimidated by beauty and to be willing to criticize someone's behavior even though they're used to getting everything that they want it's novel it's it's novel right you know uh uh, uh for example if, uh, if you go on a date with a beautiful girl and she just starts stealing food off of your plate, she might have been able to get away with that for her whole life. Her parents might have let her get and take whatever she wanted. Uh, uh, all of her boyfriends might have let her take and get whatever they wanted or whatever she wanted because they were terrified that by offering any negativity or any any sort of like any sort of uh, uh, no, they would be cut off or destroyed or whatever, right? And so you say, hey, you're stealing my fries. Like, what do you, can you, could you not? I paid, for, these are my fries. And, and, you know, some stupid thing like that. And they might, that might actually cause them to be interested in you. And that's weird as an idea. And again, I don't, I don't in any, or not again, I'll say it just explicitly. I don't in any way support manipulative pickup artistry. I think it's just wrong. I do dramatically support talk to lots of women be willing to be honest to them, at least. Like, if they do shit that's fucked up, you should not just be like, well, I guess you're pretty, so it doesn't matter. You can get away with whatever you want. Just be a total bitch, which happens a lot. And so there's a, a pretty strong correlation between attractive women and total bitches, as far as I can tell. And that's not okay. It's like, that's that's not their fault, really. It's really not their fault. It's the fault of the people around them and how they treat them, I think. All well, this is just assumed because I don't really know. Like, I'm not a bad looking person, but I don't think I'm a nine plus. And I'm also not female, so I don't get the, the, the male attention, although I do get male attention and it irks me and I have to figure out how to deal with that. Um, because as, as I have been told by a few people, I'm a, a perfect twink is what I have been told. And that's a, a, f that's a funny thing to, to realize. It's like, yeah, great. And that's that's part of the reason that I thought um, I went down the the path of thinking that I was gay, was because, well, gay people wanted me, <laughs> and being wanted is is kind of nice, and yeah, it's kind of nice to be desired, and and I don't get that from women, or at least women don't give me that in the same way. I just I haven't met the right women that do, maybe, or maybe. Maybe just gay men are far more men are far more forward than women, right? Like, clearly, that seems just true. I I get hit on at the gym every few weeks, and it's usually subtle, but I can usually figure it out pretty pretty quickly. It's like, oh, that dude is just sort of hanging around me, and then makes up an excuse to come and talk to me, and is like, "Hi, can I help you lift your weights?" And I'm like, "I'm on my warm up set of one plate deadlifts, and I'm moving up to three and a half plates deadlifts." No, you can't help me. Sorry. But I have to sort of restrain that and be like, well, this is a guy just trying to trying to do a thing and being embarrassed by it and all this jazz. So I guess I have to be relatively nice. And to think that attractive women and even unattractive women have to deal with that tenfold, twentyfold, thirtyfold as because because men just approach constantly. We're fucking dog. This is a joke between me and some of my friends at the gym is like. One of them is very much a hound dog, right? Like, very, very much. A girl walks in, he's like, mm, oh, boobs and, and booty. Just like, he's he's off. He's just off. We're having a an intricate conversation about something, and he's just gone. It's like it's like the dog in Up who's just like, squirrel, squirrel, tits. 
oh, ass, oh, ha, girl. It's um, it's very literally girl. So we make we make the joke. We're like, roo, 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 roo. <laughs> and he's like, oh no, I'm doing it again. Okay, all right, I, I get, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm becoming a dog, and it's literally it's like being a dog chasing a chasing a rabbit. You're like, oh, oh, I get it, go, oh. <laughs> so it's exactly right. Roo, 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 roo. And you know that's that is. That is how it is, and there are ways to be that are less, less wrong than the roo roo roo, right? Because women are like people, you know, and you could treat them like people, and then maybe you'd get to know them, and maybe you'd find out that they're actually attractive under the surface too, and that they've got interesting things to share with you, and like different perspectives on the world that are totally devoid and totally different from the male perspective in a way that men seemingly cannot fathom at all. Like, we don't get how women work one bit. Not even a little bit. And that's interesting. Yeah, that's, that's cool. That's something useful. It's like, well, maybe they've got something that you don't have. Maybe, maybe that's an extension of the duality of everything, right? Because, like, every atom, every atom has a positive and a negative, and they're in balance. And the next atom has two positives and two negatives, and they're in balance. And if they're not in balance, it's an ion, and it's destructive, right? Like, it... It ends up being acidic or basic, and it steals electrons or grants them to everything else, and it causes some problems until everything's in balance. But anyway, everything's in balance, and your brain is in balance with a side that's more creative and fluid and a side that's more conservative and rigid. And then our whole biology is to some extent in balance with, with one set of entities that are one way and one set of entities that are another way, and yet they seem to be capable of coming together into some kind of harmony, at, le at least for... A fair majority of people that is true and I understand that that doesn't account for homosexuality or trans folks or non-binary folks and I'm sorry I just don't know how to uh, account for those because I don't know enough it's, it doesn't mean that that there's any lack of validity there I think all those people are people <laughs> and are super valid and are the way that they are for legitimate reasons I would say and and good for them and and good for them for figuring that out and for for trying to say this way of being that I am is valid and trying to make sure that the rest of the world approves of it. You know, that's that seems like a worthwhile struggle to me to to a great many extents. But there there seems to be something inherent in that in that, like, maybe there's something about the opposite sex that's like really valuable or maybe there's just something about other people that's like really valuable because you're just a speck of dirt and maybe if you could connect seriously and sincerely with another speck of dirt, you'd be like a little pebble and you might be a little bit better and a little bit more capable of withstanding the horrors of the universe. All right, I'm going to check the phone. Nope, and that's entirely okay. All right. Had some had some tea, talked about some things. Let's see, is there anything anything particularly of importance other to talk about? Oh, yeah. I'm missing some days this week. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know, I don't know which, which one I'm going to miss. So it's Thursday, right? And, uh, so tomorrow is Cyberpunk. I've got, I've got a couple of videos that I missed already today. So I've missed Poon Poon, I've missed Mushoku, and now today is Gundam. And I really have to choose one of those three. I really have to choose one of those three for today, because there's no way I can do all of them. And I can maybe sacrifice, uh, one of my days in the weekend. Maybe. I don't know for sure. I can maybe sacrifice one of my days on the weekend to to do one of the other ones, but, you know, yesterday I really needed to do the, the, the being as good video. I really needed to do that. It was like, that was so much more important to me than watching a show or, or whatever. It was just speaking out these things because it just was flowing. It was flowing. And, and when it's flowing, I'm, I'm loath to stop that. I'm loath to, loath to interrupt myself. So I have to choose. I think I choose Mushoku. And I'm I'm sorry I know I know uh, I I always choose Mushoku because it's the it's one of the more interesting things but also because poo poo fucking hurts and I just like just had death near me and it's a little much it, it's just a little much and then Gundam is still still muddled and I'm still not sure what to do with it so the thing that's a clear path forward is to watch Mushoku and to discuss it, so that's what I'm going to do today, I think. Um, and I, I apologize to the Poon Poon folks and to the Mush the, uh, the Gundam folks. I I'm sorry, I'm just trying to figure out my my shit, and I'm doing an, a, a mediocre job of it, and that's, you know, starting badly and stupidly is the best that I've got, because at least I'm starting, and at least I'm 
moving in a direction, but uh, I'm I'm working on getting this consistency going, and these daily brews help, but they also hurt, I guess. So it's a give it a take. It's a mix and match, and uh, and it is sort of what it is. Anyway, that's that's my morning. I've asked a girl out, and I'll uh, I'll let you know as soon as I as soon as I have the opportunity how it goes. Um, because again, I I've sort of I've separated myself from it now. Like it's no longer an uncertainty within me; it's an uncertainty within the world. I've decided what I want to do about it, and maybe the world will say no, and so be it. And maybe the world will say yes, and so be it. That might be really interesting. Maybe both would be really interesting. Maybe either would be okay. Maybe, maybe it doesn't matter whether I succeed or fail. Maybe what matters is that I stepped forward into the unknown, and that means that I'm more willing to step forward into the next unknown, and that increases my overall possibility of overall eventual success. Well, it increases it from zero to something other than zero, because if you never step forward, you just slow down and get torn apart and die. So step forward into the unknown, push against the wall, push against yourself, push so hard that you shatter and can be rebuilt, and drink some tea. And uh, anybody who's watching this, any of you young men out there who have a girl or a boy or an NB or somebody else, who cares, who is you know, who you're like in orbit around or you know, but you haven't done the thing about yet and it's aching in the back of your brain and when you see her, you feel like a churn in your gut that's like, man, I really should do something about that, but I don't know how. Do something about it. Do something about it. And if you come out the other side with a no, well, you can take that no to the bank and turn it into gold because it's, it's worth it to get rejected. It's worth it to get hurt. It's worth it to fail. The alternative is sitting and waiting for yourself to die. Because you're already on the path to dying, and you can't, you can't do a lot to slow that one down. So live, live while you got the chance, man. Live while you got the fucking chance and go after the girl that, that might have the slimmest possibility of, one, maybe saying yes, and two, maybe making you uh, uh, feel like you're complete. And, and maybe just the act of pursuing her and having her around might make the rest of the suffering of the world worthwhile. Even the suffering of being around her might make it might be worthwhile, might be worth it. I, I don't know. I haven't been with somebody in too long to say, but I look forward to trying and maybe failing and maybe telling you about it. Okay, it's been a few hours. I just recorded a rather long Mushoku Tensei video, and I uh, immediately after stopping recording, I went and I checked my phone, and I... I, uh, uh, in, in that moment, there was no response, and then moments later, I got a response. Um, and what she said was, Oh my gosh, T, you're making me blush and so flattered. You are a one-of-a-kind human being, and I could... Oops, phone turned off. And I could never lie to you when I say I'm really trying to be on my lonesome right now and work on me. Although meeting you has become such a blessing, I'd love to get to know you more and create a lifelong friendship. And my response is, down as hell, dude. Like, yes, you're a cool person. Thank you for being... And I said her name. I don't feel in any way rejected or bad. She is a cool person. I have a feeling. I'm not going to push it, right? I'm not going to push this, but... First off, I think that, that she and her boyfriend broke up not that long ago, and I think she really does need time. Second, I think she's young as hell, and she's going to figure some stuff out. And third, I think that, you know, probably if we were to rush into something, it would end up being silly and wrong and... and falling apart for both of us. So I'm more than, more than, more than happy to be legitimate friends with her. But now, our friendship is, it's built on a little bit of trust. There's no uncertainty there, right? It's like, she's aware that I'm attracted to her. Now, I'm not sure if she feels the same way, but she's not disinterested in me and hasn't rejected me outright, so that's pretty okay. And I think it might be 
you know, it feels like settling, but it's not. I think it might be worthwhile to be in the orbit of a positively directed, uh, uh, physically, psychologically, emotionally intelligent, and, and beautiful person, regardless of whether I engage in a romantic relationship with her. It might be worthwhile anyway. And it, even even still, how about this? Like Rudy with Eris and like Rudy in, in Mushoku, Ten Mushoku Tensei, learning to deal with all of these different characters that he deals with and all these different w women that he deals with, maybe it would be very good for me to be around a woman that I am deeply attracted to and have to sublimate my desires in order to accomplish a better social outcome long term. Maybe that would be good for me. And so maybe, I think the, the phrase everything happens for a reason is some bullshit. I think that's it's, it's backward thinking because later you'll figure out a reason why that happened and then you'll say oh that's why it happened but that's not it didn't happen for that reason you've you've put it into context in your past but maybe this happens for a reason and and maybe my life has already improved dramatically just by taking the step forward into the unknown and what I got, I thought I was going to get, to get one of two options. And weirdly, because I don't understand women and I don't understand this woman, what I got was the third option that I didn't even know existed. And how cool is that? How fucking, that's cool. That's cool to me. You know, and, and maybe, I'm not going to hold out hope for this, but maybe in a couple of years she's going to go, hey, you know, you know that, that time you tried to date me? Let's do that. Or maybe it'll happen organically. Or maybe I'll ask her again in a couple months. You know? Or maybe I'll realize that I don't like her that much. Or maybe I'll meet somebody else. Or maybe any of these possibilities. But I don't think I'd be able to step into those possibilities in that space of new and different and more, more compellingly interesting and valuable uncertainty if I hadn't locked or tried to lock this piece of uncertainty in as it is. And so it's locked in. And maybe I've just been let down easy. You know, maybe she thinks I'm I'm a dumb, ugly fuck. Fair, so be it. Well, I get the I get the chance to to try to improve and to, in my own mind, regardless of whether it's even a possibility, to stay near this person that I admire because I admire her. I actually admire her and her way of being quite significantly. I get to stay near this person and go, what kind of person would I have to be to be somebody that? would be worthy of her admiration in exchange. That would be... That would be cool. And I'm down for it. And... That's just rad, dude. It's just rad. So there we go. Conflict. Uncertainty. Decision. Goal. Action to move toward the goal. Resolution that was totally unexpected but positive. And I think the resolution would have been totally unexpected but positive either way. If she'd been like, oh, no, totally, let's go, get, let's go get coffee and we'll talk. It's like, okay, great, a different type of positive resolution. But this doesn't feel like a negative resolution to me. And it feels like self-justification, but, you know, not everyone is the one. There are 8 billion people on this planet and half of them are female, about. And, you know, uh, probably, probably a quarter of those I would find attractive... And, and maybe a quarter of those would be within my age range. And so we're dealing with hundreds of millions of people within a decade of me on either side, age range-wise, who I might find attractive. And amongst them, this one girl is the one? Like, no. Like, ridiculous. Ridiculous. And people say plenty of fish in the sea, but it's like, that's a big sea. It just takes a long time to find any fish that are interesting, but there are plenty of them. There are plenty of them. And isn't that, isn't that cool? I think this is a really cool resolution to the thing, and I'm happy to have, uh, happy to have gone through it. Happy to have gone through it and gone through with it and been able to talk it through with you. It's, um, it's rad. It's pretty rad. So, there you go. Alright, I'll, uh, I'll put this in the video somewhere, and, and there it be. Peace. Good luck. And, uh, peace. And I mean it.